Welcome back to San Antonio Living. We're very excited to spend the next 30 minutes talking about addiction and recovery. If you've been watching San Antonio Living, then certainly you know about Soba Texas. It is a recovery center in the Texas Hill Country. And joining us this morning, Greg Hanley is here, the CEO of Soba Texas, Alex Dragici, the Director of Operations, and Daniel Baldwin, who's been joining us since the beginning, uh, just kind of shedding some light on the process. And of course, you're good friends with these guys. So thank you, everybody, for coming again. Again this morning kind of taking a different route this morning because by now I think people know that you're here Soba Texas is in the hill country they are ready to help you guys are so wonderful talking about addiction and recovery and helping people here in San Antonio but I want to talk a little bit about addiction in Hollywood and seeing addiction being played out on television because this is something that is kind of new you know we didn't have cameras following people around uh, back in the days. Now we're seeing a lot of alcoholism, uh, people who are strung out on drugs on television. For me, it provides an opportunity to talk to my kids about, hey, um, do you wanna look like that on television? This is what's going on. I think one of the people that has really had a tough time lately is Kim Richards from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. You guys know I am a devotee of that show. Um, she's just been struggling with her sobriety over the last couple of years. Recently arrested, she is appearing on the Dr. Phil show today. Uh, they reportedly staged some sort of intervention on the show. You know, when something like that is portrayed on TV, what do you think about that, Greg? Well, I think that um celebrities struggle it, a lot of times it's even harder for them yeah um, I sober companioned some celebrities going uh, that were doing movies and um, music gigs and people like to get high with them and it's very hard when you're in the public eye to admit something because yeah. you're so afraid of everything falling apart which inevitably it's it's going to. Mm -hmm. We we just so happen to have a celebrity in studio. <laughs> anyone? Anyone? Uh, do you do you identify with that? I mean, what goes through your head when you see someone struggling like that? You know, if you look at um, the the cases of the better documented celebrities that have struggled and 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 then found came in the the out out on the other side of the tunnel. Look at Charlie, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, he got fired. Yeah. They took him out of television. They took him out. You know, I watch what's going on with this, with this woman, and I think to myself, if I said, every time I go play basketball with my friends, I end up drinking again, wouldn't you think you shouldn't go back and play basketball with your friends that lead you to the drinking again? Yeah. This is not working for this woman. We've known through the show that she's had this struggle for some time, and yet she's still on the show. Yeah. So they're staging an intervention on the show. and the, Get off the show. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself, address the problem, and come back and be the person that's now in recovery and looks much better. Than but doing this while they're on the show absolutely never works. Yeah. Um, I've seen it a hundred times amongst my friends, and what it requires is to stop touring with the band or stop the show or do whatever, and address this issue. And you know, it's funny because if she had cancer, and she was a really serious level breast cancer, do you think that they'd be doing an intervention with her to think whether or not she should go in and get chemo or whatever? She, no, they wouldn't. She'd be going to get it done and probably be doing it privately, which is what I, my advice to her would be. We're in a whole other world now, aren't we? It, <clears throat> another person uh, dealing with reported addiction, a young guy, Johnny Manziel, uh, already in rehab and out of rehab, reportedly his girlfriend, uh, same situation, and it really is the same story. You gotta separate from the people that are causing or helping to facilitate this problem. Alex, I know uh, you see a lot of people coming into Soba, Texas, a lot of young people. Do you think that that age right there, is there a big problem with that age group, or really is it just widespread? Uh, it's widespread. I mean, yeah. uh, I know we don't we don't treat adolescents, but it, it starts with adolescents. It starts with the 18 to 26, all the way up to, you know, 60, 70. It really, it's not a, it's not an age. Um, yeah. I mean, we we've treated at all levels except for adolescents. But related to the same topic, we're talking about celebrities and you know, the hard part of this. It's because they're surrounded with so many yes men and yes people around them. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the way to Daniel saying, yeah, dealing with it, Fiesta last week, we were walking through, 
probably in two hours of us walking around, he had to say no to somebody offering something all the way to, here's a free beer, here's something. Yeah over and over and over and over and he just looked at us and goes guys I gotta get out of here. Gotta get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have well, to. And you always hear of the celebrities getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the ones that you continually see getting in trouble aren't getting recovery and the ones that you see you'll see them for a minute getting in bad trouble and then all of a sudden you'll see this peak of their career mm -hmm. and those are guys that actually took a minute and took care of themselves. How important is it to find a sober mentor? I mean, to me, that seems like the number one thing. If you don't have the right guidance and, and the right team attached to you, you're never gonna make it. It's critical. Yeah. Yeah, doing a, uh, this is bigger than something that you can handle on your own. Mm -hmm. And I had to relearn everything. And luckily I had um, somebody with a lot of time that could kind of walk me through the tough parts and then I could call up and talk to when things got a little tricky or weird and he would understand and wouldn't judge and kind of uh, just the phone call of, of having that support mm -hmm. would lead me out of the path that could have been you know, really destructive. We have a, a team here in San Antonio. We have a group of sober mentors that can help you get through whatever it is you're dealing. They are at Soba Texas. You see them here. These are the guys that are going to help you get through this problem. The phone number is on your screen. It's 866-547-6451. We've got more with Soba Texas when we come back. Welcome back to San Antonio Living. We are chatting with our friends from Soba, Texas, Greg Hanley, the CEO, Alex Dragici, the Director of Operations, and actor Daniel Baldwin, who uh, is good friends with all of these folks and here to help you uh, get on your sober journey. And I want to continue real quick uh, the topic about celebrities and addiction. And you made a real good point, Daniel, when we were in the break about, you know, crashing and burning and taking your sobriety seriously well uh, uh, my point was is that a lot of these celebrities that we see that have had problems and, 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 and when it's well documented and been in the press let's take a prime example of Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. who's a, a friend of mine for many many years and I'm so proud of him and his recovery but he's a guy who took off got that notoriety becoming a celebrity because he was so talented and then struggled and fell off the face of the planet and yeah. look at him now now that he's clean the same is going to be said I think when you look at a freshman who wins the Heisman Trophy and you look now, will he ever reach his potential? His one biggest roadblock now will be this issue. If he gets sober, watch him. Watch him rewrite records with his team and, and, and become the star that we all expect him to become now yeah. you know, in the NFL. But does, if he does not address this and get this right, this guy will be out of the league in a couple of years, or he yeah. could be dead. And, and we're talking about Johnny Manziel a little bit, and, and you know, I wonder if his parents are looking at what's going on now and saying, you know, there were some signs, signs there when he was a younger guy. Uh, Greg, you have a magazine that you put out once a month. It's called Recovery Today, and there's a lot of great articles in there. You can find it online, but one caught our eye, and it's about teens and recovery and some signs that you need to look out for as a parent. And I'm just gonna run through a couple of them because I have a teenager, um, you have a teenager you know I feel like I'm a detective constantly <laughs> I feel like I ask a lot of annoying questions and my kid looks at me like this but these are questions that you have to ask so here are some signs that could save your teens life for example obviously as a parent we get that gut feeling we should trust in that right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah nothing is going to be bigger than your intuition mm -hmm. and um, I always say that if you think something's going on, mm -hmm. something's going on, and you need to, to find out, get a drug test. And <clears throat> there, we were talking yesterday about an intervention on somebody that is young. Don't go at them like you're trying to find that they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just let them know people are seeing things that are concerning, and I want to show that you're fine. Yeah. So just pee in a cup and where, and we'll be and, done with yeah, this. Yeah, and I'll be able to yeah. tell everybody to get off your back. Yeah. Uh, another tip, uh, if you see your teen needing privacy and secrecy, I remember closing my door and locking it a lot, and a lot of that is teenage angst. A lot of it isn't, though, and that's something that you need to look out for. You know, I, uh, the, 
the idea that Greg has, has told me before about asking your child to submit to a urine test, um, you know, <clears throat> if your child has nothing to hide, why would they say no? You know, they, they may get ruffled their feathers a little bit because you, you may put, but you know what, you're gonna put everybody else at ease. And he brought up another great point, which was now you're gonna be able to relieve that peer pressure that the child has when they turn around and they say, come on, man, try this with me. Try hey, you know what, my parents drug test me, I can't do that. It gives them the excuse. Yeah. It's a total out. It is a, a great, great out. Great thing. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, I'll add one more thing to that. And this is the end all be all to find out what's going on. I'd like to see your phone, please. Mm -hmm. And you take that cell phone and go through the top 20 people texted on that last 20 texts yep. and go through all the conversations, and believe me, it's on that phone. Yeah. There's no question. The last thing that you want to happen is to be sitting with your son or daughter in a treatment environment with a professional, and like so many times, and I, and I mean more often than not, parents would come in and go, I, I think my... Uh, kid is drinking or smoking too much pot or something and I'll say you know what let me talk to him by myself for a minute and they'll find out that uh, they've been on hard drugs for two years. The, the second the parents walk away Greg just looks at him and goes come yeah, on they just go with me yeah, yeah I've been on heroin for four years. And you know what, I, I think at that point when you get in there and you're talking to them level to level, they are looking for help. They're telling you what they've done because they don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, and that's where SOBA comes into play. And they don't know who to talk to about yeah. that and who to trust. And if you can give them um, the opportunity to be treated not like they're bad, mm -hmm. but they're just sick, Nobody wants to uh, be living like that. And these kids, it's happening by accident for them. Yeah. They don't mean to become a heroin addict. And uh, it just, it's so easy and so prevalent that on Monday, they're a regular kid in school, and on Saturday, they're addicted to heroin because they went to the wrong party and somebody said, here, try a you know, smoke some of this, kind of like they used to do pot. And I want to steer off top, it's not the same topic, but just real quick, because if you live in San Antonio and you have a high school student like I do, there is heroin out there. There yes. are hard drugs out there. Absolutely. There's meth out there. there and a lot of you are sitting at home, you're like, no, there is not. Or you're thinking, I live know, on I the north side, my, that's think, not there. Yeah, I live I on the south side, are that's not there. Goofing around with pot, yeah. that's what they're thinking. We, it's but, all out there. Well, you know, so or they'll grow out of it. Yeah. And they can't grow out of this. It, it, it either stops by an intervention, either by parents, by the police, or by the, or medically. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that, that a kid can just say, I don't want to do yeah. this anymore and put it down. Once they're started, they need to have um, medical and professional help. But it's, please understand that it's so prevalent now. Mm -hmm. It is the equal, believe it or not, to what it was like when someone said, do you want to have a beer? There's yeah. that much of it out there. It's not, you know, the inner city, you know, or, or indigent person that uh, our image went in the 70s and 80s of, uh, it's now so prevalent, it's harder to buy alcohol for these kids than it is for them to find heroin. Yeah. That's how prevalent it is. And that doesn't do mean they're shooting fooled. it. Yeah. There's, they're more than likely, you know, it starts with the process of their smoking it, so. Yeah. Kind of like they smoke weed. Parents, do not close your eyes to this because it is out there. Uh, you can find out more about some signs that you need to look for online. The magazine is called Recovery Today. And of course, uh, you can find out more about how to talk to your teens and things like that on the website, SobaTexas.com. We've got more when we come back. Welcome back to San Antonio Living, talking about recovery and addiction, or I guess it's flipped, addiction and recovery with our friends from Soba, Texas. Greg Hanley is here. We're adding in Doug Minder. He's with the Soba Recovery Center as well, and you know actor Daniel Baldwin. All right, we've got a lot of questions coming in this morning, so I'm going to get right to them. This is from a viewer. Uh, my teen has battled addictions in the past. He's starting college this coming fall, and I'm worried that he will relapse. What can I do to help him? Well, check with the college. A lot of the universities, especially in Texas right now, have sober dorms. And I love that if idea. He is going to, if he's in That's recovery great. and has a year and he goes into a sober dorm, then there's automatically a crew of people that aren't carrying on and um, he's 
likely to follow that herd than the herd of people that are going to get in trouble. We have Sober several dorm. college programs. That is fantastic. And again, I learned something every time you guys are here. So thank you for that information. Great information for parents. Look up Sober Dorms. Okay, another question from a viewer. My friend has told me about her son's recent experimentation with drugs. She's tried talking to him but hasn't seen a difference. What's the next step? Intervene. Yeah, get together. Do it. Get a drug test. Yeah. Talking, well, and continue to talk, um, but do it in a way that is going to create a dialogue and a conversation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, ask questions that are going to get, the, get let him know or let her know that he's able to talk about what's going on yeah. and freely and that you're there to help and not to judge. And parents, if you don't know this, you can get a drug test at your local drugstore, Walgreens, CVS, whatever. Um, if you can't find it, ask your pharmacist, take it home with you and do what you need to do. Another viewer question, I've always wondered if it's possible for a person to beat an addiction with just plain willpower. Do they have to go into treatment? Well, it, I, I've known people that have mm -hmm. um, not gone to treatment. Uh, when I got sober five years ago, um, a good friend of mine and I were using, and um, he he went on Suboxone, which is an opiate opiate uh, maintenance drug, mm -hmm. and he uh, got off the heavy opiates and then started drinking, and never you know didn't go to treatment, but never touched drugs again. But he was just completely miserable and just unhappy with his life. And mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago, yeah, he passed away. He, just, he, um, he was just driving home from work and. Well, the drugs aren't the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So the, take, taking away the drugs and the problem rears its head. And so if it's anxiety and depression and people are treating, uh, you know, or even like a bipolar, a lot of times bipolar is uh, use a lot of alcohol and, and things to kind of manage it. And it's just the wrong, it's kind of like the wrong mix. Yeah. Doug, let me ask you this, uh, the underlying problem. Uh, I know a lot of recovery centers will treat the addiction and that's that. Uh, the difference at SOBA is that you guys are treating those underlying problems. Yes, we have qualified clinicians who are master's level therapists mm -hmm. who can deal with you know, anxiety, bipolar, borderline personality disorder, so they trauma. treat trauma, lots of PTSD, and when we're able to treat that, whereas most treatment centers only have drug and alcohol counselors, and it's out of their scope. They cannot you know, talk about those things. Yeah. So, you know, it's a band aid on the wound when you go into a program for 30 days and you talk about not, you know, coping tools to not use drugs. Okay, go to AA meetings, mm -hmm. but you know, when they get out of there, the first thing they do is they you know, usually go and get high. Yeah. You can bail all the water out of the sinking boat that you want, but you're going to keep bailing water out of the boat until you fix the hole in the boat. So true. It is well, true. Well, long term is uh, really important too. So, I know when I went to treatment, I detoxed for about two weeks. Then I lied to my therapist for about two weeks, and then mm -hmm. I was gone. And the um, there's a lot of things that take time to get to. Yeah. And for to develop that therapeutic um, trust, it, it takes a little while. So, we have different levels of care that go on up to a year because there's some things that could take six months before I'm going to trust you yeah. enough to tell you what really happened. And that of course is the difference with SOBA. It is long term to get you back on track. All right, we've got our final word with SOBA Texas. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. Uh, hopefully we were able to help one of you or some of you today with our friends from Soba, Texas. I do want to mention that uh, you'll have representatives out at our Health Expo. It's June 6th, and so if you've got questions about sobriety, you want to learn more about Soba, Texas, make sure you come to our Health and Wellness Expo. You guys will have a team out there. We'll, all right, guys, final we'll, words. We'll all be there, too. You will, will all be yeah, there. We'll be there. We'll all be there. Oh, that's fantastic. And we'll have other people, and yeah. we'll have some therapists there, so... Uh, final words, it starts with the phone call. We always say it. So It really does. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel? Yeah, don't, don't hesitate. You know, we, we have such an amazing staff out at Sober Texas, you know, as, as Doug was saying. Um, shout out to Shannon and the crew <laughs> at Sober <laughs> Texas for the great job that you're doing out there, guys. We love you. You know, it's so true. It really is about a team. And that's one thing that I've learned um, from talking with you guys. If you have someone who's trying to get sober, it takes 
a team. It takes a family. We you can the find best that team family ever out there. Yeah. here the best. in San Antonio. It really is the best team. Soba Texas, uh, of course, everything you need to know is on your screen. Give them a call. SobaTexas.com is the website. You can find out more. Like Alex says, it starts with a phone call. The number is there on your screen. Soba Texas here in the San Antonio area. We'll see you next time. Junk and